Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's going again. Notre Dame yeah, scores. Uh, on the offensive line coming on in, you can you can play center here and hand the uh, the mic or the ball, so to speak, off to. Uh, uh, Braxton Cave. I hope I don't break yeah, this Yeah, how shirt. is that? I mean, you know, wrong side no, of the ball, and I are the ball to the right side of the ball. You know, you offense, defense, you know, you talk about the competition you get to have in practice. You know, now it's just you guys going against, you know, each other. How's that dynamic play out to where you don't, you know, it doesn't get old, it doesn't get stale, but you continue to, to push each other that next level. You know, what has been the, the, the biggest, um, biggest thing that stood out to you this yeah. camp from a defensive standpoint, have they really gotten you, got helped you, pushed you guys, and uh, moved you to another level? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, as Coach Kelly has said, we've done a ton of 11 on 11 work. And uh, we know we have one of the best defenses in the country. And, you know, the, the more we put into it, the more we're going to get out of it. And at the end of the day, um, you know, the, it can never get old because, you know, we, we practice for way too long, work too hard, you know, to to let things become routine and, you know, not give it everything we got. Veteran offensive line coming back, that there's really only been serious competition in terms of who's going to start at one position on your line this year. What does it mean to have that kind of experience back? I mean, it's, it's huge. Um, you know, playing with guys who you have a past with and they have experience, you know, it, it makes my job easier you know, just because, you know, sometimes my head might be down and, you know, Zach or Watt, you know, they're right there making the calls or goal, even Golik, um, you know, he, he stepped in and did great while I was out. So, um, you know, as far as communication and leadership, you know, we have no lack of that on the offensive line. And, um, you know, it's definitely been one of our strong points. Well, you know, you, we just we're just talking to Jim Morris and he's kind of leadership role over uh, a non veteran group. Uh, like I said, the guys that's kind of a question mark, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now you switch over to yourself being one of the leaders, if not you know, the leader of a veteran group of guys. Mm -hmm. You know, wh what is that, you know, and I'm a big fan of offensive alignment, as you <laughs> well know. Um, what is that dynamic just with that group of eight or nine guys, that, that core guys, you know, how do you guys build that, that camaraderie that you need to play the offensive line at a high level? I mean, we're, we're such a tight-knit group that uh, – you know, even when something goes wrong, I mean, all you really got to do is look in the other guy's eyes and you know, you know exactly what you did and what you got to do to make things right. So, I mean, the biggest thing with us is that you don't really have to jump on a guy, you know, when he does something wrong because he knows what he did um, and he knows what the expectation is. So, you know, with, with an experienced line, um, you know, nobody wants to let the guy next to him down. So, you know, there's always a high expectation along the offensive line with one another. I often talk about the, the fact that the perception of the average fan, especially guys that didn't play in high school and, and their wives and girlfriends, is your job is to line up across the guy in front of you and knock him over. <laughs> and it's that simple, but it's not. Tell, talk a little bit without giving away anything, but talk about what your responsibilities are when you get over that football. What happens between the time you touch the football? Or even what happens between the time you line up, mm -hmm. go down and touch the football and actually snap it? Um. You know, I'll get I'll get a play call from the quarterback uh, with a cadence. Um, you know, make my calls to the left, make my calls to the right, and and what are those calls? Um, generically, not not specifically. It's generic. Not a lot of generic <laughs> calls. They're okay. really terminology but, but, because he will actually actually. All right, well, don't give me the, the terminology, <laughs> but don't give me the terminology, and don't answer this because he'll stop me on this. Yes, but can, what kinds of things are you reading? And so, in a sense, what you're doing is you also. It's not just the quarterback reading the defense. Mm -hmm. You're reading it for the lineman. Yeah. Yes. Um, and communicating communicating that through whatever terminology you use, yeah. which we don't want you to use here. No, I mean just looking at stances, alignments. Um, in pressure situations, um, I'm looking at where the safety's lined up. Um, you know, th there's tons of different little keys that we have, and uh, you know, it's my job to make sure that everybody's on the same page and seeing things, you know, through one set of eyes. And and, and, and along those lines, you know, how is it? You know, you get you know your three technique, and you know, you, you like I said, uh, no one technique, and you're on with a double team. You know, talk about that non-verbal communication you have to have with that guard mm -hmm. to make sure hey i'm not leaving the the the, the double team too early and that's right. something that a lot of people don't even think about well what's yeah. going through your mind when you're making those steps and you're tracking that linebacker at the same time right i mean the, the biggest thing is 
I've done it a million times in practice. And, you know, I mean, me and the guard I'm working with have done it together a million times in practice. So you kind of just know, you know, what, what the other guy's going to do and what it, how it's going to be. And um, obviously week to week it changes, you know, with game plan. But, uh, you know, for the most part, there, you spend so much time with the other guy that you just know everything that he's going to do. Hey, something that I haven't done yet today, and, and we often ignore it because we're talking about football. We're focused on football, and it's important. But here, the academic side is so important for all the athletes, and I'm just impressed that I think football players are raising the bar there as well. You've already graduated mm -hmm. with a degree in psychology. That's a great accomplishment, but I also want to ask you, how does that degree in psychology help you as a team leader? I mean, you know, I, I just finished up doing a directed reading on uh, mental toughness. And, uh, you know, everyone's, you know, everyone looks at football and they're just a bunch of meathead guys who go out there and beat up on each other. But, you know, there's so much more that goes into it because every, every day it's, you know, it's almost like Groundhog's Day. You know, you're, you're so used, you do the same thing over and over and over. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of mental toughness to go out there and, and know that you're, you're going after something more than that and that uh, you have a job to do, and there's 120 other guys, you know, who are counting on you to do your job every single day. I'm talking about mental toughness, and people, you know, throw that phrase around quite a bit. You know, for me as a, as a football player, I think it's more critical. And, and by the way, offensive linemen are the smartest people on the field, and that includes quarterbacks. <laughs> so I had to get that out there, a big fan of offensive line. But talk about what, you know, how does mental toughness translate off the field, you know, as you're, you know, you've graduated, you're in your fifth year, you know, you, you've taken some graduate courses, but hey, you're going to matriculate whether it's to the NFL or whether it's to a, you know, another professional profession. Mm -hmm. How is mental toughness helping you that you've developed transition as you move through, uh, matriculate through these uh, four now five years? <laughs> um, you know, the, the biggest part I think is that th with football. Um, I've been through every situation possible, and I've been pushed in 100 degree, 100 degree heat. Um, in South Bend, I've been through <laughs> <little snow>. negative <laughs> 20 degrees. Um, you know, very rarely, rarely. That doesn't happen often. Rarely. <laughs> <laughs> coaches yelling at you. Um, you know, there's so much things even outside of football that go along with the, the football family. Um, that. You, you've kind of been in every situation and you've been in those pressure situations. So um, you know how to react. And, and it's not just football, it's, it comes to play in life. So, um, you know, football has definitely, you know, set me up for to be a successful person because, you know, I've been there and I've done that, not, not only on the football field, but you can put it into, into life's perspective also. Braxton, I want to thank you. Thank you. Starting center, Braxton Cave. Appreciate Outstanding it. job. Good luck this year. I know we're looking awesome, forward to it. Thank As you. already, it appears the running game is going to be one of the strong points of this offense. So, uh, And we have a, a guy I know that you know, <laughs> Jack Swarbrick, ready to uh, – you can, you can be the center for the quarterback here at the <laughs> athletics <laughs> department. <laughs> Not even close. Hey, Not even close. Good to see you. You can see the, the uh, exchange there. There was no fumble. No Good fumble. job because <laughs> we didn't want to fumble that one. Oh!